In this video, we're going to be talking a bit more about Fallout 76 news. Right around Bethesda Game Days at PAX East 2020, we actually got just a ton of other news. Some of the stuff that actually came out just before Bethesda Game Days. Additional teases on Wastelanders you may have missed, and also a totally new event that is happening for Fallout 76 that is pretty interesting. But also a few things to come out in the aftermath of this that I think collectively are pretty interesting. In this video, as you could probably guess, we're going to be talking about all of that, and even I just wanted at the end to add a little tidbit on my lasting impressions of Wastelanders. I was able to play about a half hour at PAX East, and now that I've sat with it for a few days, I think I have some interesting perspectives to give. Wastelanders is coming to Fallout 76 in just over one month, and as you all could probably imagine, I'm going to have a ton in the way of content for this new DLC, so if you do want to get subscribed, now is a pretty good time. Even just keep up to date with what happens leading up to that event as we likely hear more and more. But first things first, I actually do want to touch on this new event around Fallout 76 that I feel like not too many people knew about. So several users revealed last week that they were invited to Bethesda for something. They couldn't go into specifics as to what exactly they got the invite to Bethesda HQ around, but that they actually would be going on March 10th, one week from today. Though unfortunately, if you were familiar with this, it actually was delayed. I haven't seen this posted publicly anywhere, but likely we'll start to see it spread out over time. Due to concerns with 2019 novel coronavirus, the event was pushed back to an unspecified date. Although it still looks like it is happening in one way or another. Now immediately after this news went live with some of the people actually sharing the details that hey, they were invited to Bethesda, there's a lot of questions and speculation around this. Including some questions to me if I was going. And something I guess not too many people were familiar with is in March of last year, Bethesda actually did something very similar. They invited a myriad of community members to their offices in Austin, where Fallout 76 is developed, and did a couple of things. The people at the time got to playtest the Battle Royale mode early, which of course we didn't actually find out officially about the Battle Royale mode until June of that year, so they got quite an early look. But also they shared details on just some general future plans, some of which panned out, some of which still never really got implemented. But also a core aspect of that was actually gathering feedback from that group. Feedback on the battle royale mode they playtested, but also on their perceptions and reactions to other plans that Bethesda had mentioned. In larger part, it seems like this is actually very similar. Bethesda at that original event actually mentioned to the attendees they'll likely do some kind of follow-up, and that is what it looks like this was intended to be. Although, there's quite a few interesting aspects to this one. Firstly, even though both events were under NDA, this new one actually didn't have an NDA as far as announcing that you were invited. Funny enough, this is actually something Bethesda did with the Fallout 76 playtest at the Greenbrier. When I was invited to the Greenbrier, I could immediately say I was invited to the Greenbrier, which is actually somewhat unusual when it comes to hands-on or playtests like this. You normally only find out when you're able to post the footage of that event or reactions from that event. And it seems like with this recent event with the community, it was going to be similar. They could say they were going, but they couldn't actually talk about what they saw until a later date, likely until most of it actually was shown publicly. So that's just some context as to what this is, as far as what the event is going to be. Originally, I thought that it would in fact just be a hands-on with Wastelanders as well as getting some feedback, although with this delay, it actually makes me think that perhaps this is a look or a discussion as to what's to come after Wastelanders. Wastelanders is, again, only a little over a month away, and unless the event is happening in the next two to three weeks, it wouldn't really make sense to get feedback on the DLC without time to implement it. So likely this event will be about actually collecting feedback around future content, which is really cool to see. Bethesda directly inviting people that are prominent members of the community and giving them a look at what you're working on next so you can get feedback as to how to improve it. Although granted, again, they did this early last year and it's not like all of their issues disappeared, so we'll see how things turn out later in 2020. Also something to go along with this, at the PAX East panel, the lead on Fallout 76 mentioned that they'd be sharing their plans for what's next with the game at an event coming later. It could have been this one, or it might still be this one at a later date. I assume E3 is that is the next big thing, but who knows? Maybe this event would be a little bit different than what we saw last year and actually have some more public statements from the attendees. One of the other things to talk about is actually last week's Inside the Vault article. Typically, I'm pretty fast to talk about these, covering them on Thursday, which is the day they go up. Well, last Thursday, I was on my way to PAX East and in Boston, so I kind of missed it. And honestly, I didn't expect much, but we got some interesting reveals. They shared some additional screenshots and actually images of things we didn't see even in the Wastelanders gameplay reveal. But since I was able to play Wastelanders, I could give some context as to what's happening here. 
In this first image, they describe how when you're talking to other people, you'll have a wide variety of options as to what you want to do. We can see two special checks, which are described as being pretty widespread throughout this DLC overall, or of course, just the easy out to initiate combat immediately or progress the dialogue. So of course now, having seen the full gameplay, this isn't quite as revealing, we've seen quite a bit of dialogue thus far, but just for some context as to what exactly is going on with this character, when you initially enter into the Wayward, this guy is actually holding up Duchess and Mort, and you have some options as to how you want to defuse the situation. You walk in on their conversation, where he's inquiring about some kind of treasure or something owed to somebody else, and Duchess is like, I don't know what you're talking about. In a follow-up image, we see Rose with some dialogue options, and this is actually really interesting, far more interesting than it probably appears on first glance. So one, this does confirm, and they do confirm in the text that some old or legacy NPCs from the game will now have dialogue options. Rose is the obvious one, they also mention Modus, which I'm really excited to see, but some others even outside of that. I know though I'm sure some of these old NPCs have some interactions in the new quest lines to some degree, this is actually an instance with the old quest. It seems like what's happening in the background here is somebody's just doing the key to the past quest, which you have to do to Rose, and Bethesda actually adapted that old pre-Wastelanders quest to work with the new dialogue system which is kind of cool, and I'm curious to see how widespread this is going to be. Obviously, there were very, very few actual NPC interactions in Wastelanders, but like the first option here with giving her your keys is, I guess, what's kind of implied you would have said in the old quest, because you couldn't say anything, you just hit E on her. But being tired of your wild goose chase was something that was one of the quest objectives that you had. So I guess an insight into our internal monologue, but now we can actually say it to her. So I do wonder with these new NPC interactions if there's any new voice lines or dialogue. But either way, it's really cool to add this level of freshness to some of these old quests. Perhaps a playthrough of that old 76 content, but after Wastelanders will carry a few easter eggs or tidbits of new content. So overall, not a huge reveal from Bethesda, but quite a few pieces of interesting information at a time where I honestly didn't expect anything. They posted this article one day before having a big, broad reveal with gameplay, and frankly, I just expected a, hey, come check us out tomorrow. Which speaking of, at PAX East, we also got some other interesting things. At some point, we seemingly should be actually getting this gameplay we saw in the background. I kind of mentioned this in a few videos. But it was stated during the panel by Jeff Gardner that this gameplay would be posted online as kind of a, hey, we're going to talk over it, but it's okay because you'll be able to see it raw later. Thus far, I still haven't seen anything. If we do, I obviously will make a video on it in a more in-depth breakdown. If not, if you missed my old video, I kind of just made it full screen and did the appropriate cuts to put it in order. I'll have that linked in the description or the I. But something else that has been getting quite a bit of attention is actually, I guess, a mini interview or something that went on at PAX East between US Gamer and Pete Hines, discussing Fault 76, and specifically how they were surprised that Fault 76 players had such little interest in PvP. I'm sure you've probably seen articles on that, there's been like tons of reposts of the same article, but there's actually a ton of other interesting stuff in this also, so don't just write off this section of the video. So the actual quote in question I'll put on screen right now, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he basically says that with 76, they had the intention of putting out what they had, what they worked on, but then they would likely change it later. And one of the things that we saw major changes to was PvP, because Bethesda expected PvP to play a much bigger role, while in reality, basically nobody likes PvP, especially now that the Battle Royale mode is there. PvP is almost exclusive to that mode, while Adventure mode has almost none of it unless someone's griefing. With a quote at the end saying, there's some folks who do, don't get me wrong, but I think a smaller percentage of our player base than we thought. So there's quite a big reaction to this statement, many people describing how Bethesda was kind of out of touch with their audience. And to some degree, I definitely feel that is true. I mean, PvP in a franchise where there literally was never an ability to PvP is kind of odd. All of the past games are single player, so obviously PvP is never going to play a huge role. People are used to taking down NPCs and using things like VATs. It's not exactly producing the best FPS players ever. And I think it's actually really interesting if you watch some of those original interviews as to how Bethesda employees were describing 76. That if you were wandering through and spotted me, that you would have to wonder, hmm. like, do I hail that guy? Do I stay behind this tree and wait? Like, yeah. how is this going to go? And just how wrong they were, even from day one, there was next to no PvP. 
My biggest PvP experiences were probably at the Greenbrier event where we were all just messing around and kind of PvPing just to try it out. And although again that has been what's getting a ton of attention, his statements after this in this article are I think far more interesting, as he does reaffirm that after Wastelanders they're still committed to Fallout 76 specifically describing how with this DLC, they really created a lot of the systems that will make some of that future content possible, and they're going to be building on top of those systems. And as far as what exactly that future entails, he says that they actually have a plan, and specifically a roadmap that they will be sharing before too long, probably after Wastelanders. And this roadmap will cover all the way through to the end of this year but internally they're already talking about what content will be showing up next year. There's been a lot of discussion around a roadmap for Fallout 76, whether it's coming, all we really got was this community map, which is kind of a road, but not really, it doesn't reveal much. But seemingly, yes, there is one coming, I wouldn't be shocked if that's an E3 reveal, or perhaps even around this other community event we talked about earlier in this video. Show it off to those people internally, and then share it with everyone publicly. Although there's something I do want to point out, that Pete Hines mentions here, but also really resonated with me and my lasting impressions of playing this DLC. He mentions how with Wastelanders, they're implementing a lot of these systems, and I've described numerous times how one of my biggest concerns with Wastelanders is that it'll be great content, but just not enough of it. And now after having played that, sat with that in my head for a few days, and going back to vanilla Fallout 76, I realized a couple of things. One, I have no desire to play the base game anymore. After getting a glimpse, a feeling of dialogue choices, human NPCs, I don't want to go back to this. It just isn't fun. I like that new and better take on it. But also, I think I kind of realized that even if Wastelanders doesn't land perfectly, even if it isn't nearly enough content, or not all of that content is to the highest caliber, I think I'm going to be way more excited for the future of Fallout 76 regardless. As long as Wastelanders is good enough, and they continue down this path of single-player-esque content, I think I'm pretty much always going to be paying attention to what they have up their sleeve next. As long as Wastelanders doesn't outright bomb, I think Fallout 76 has a pretty good chance at actually really winning back the hearts of many of those hardcore Fallout fans that maybe passed on it the first time. During the first year, we saw more of an embracement of the community aspects, of the multiplayer aspects. And I hope with this new second year following Wastelanders, we see more of a hybrid. And I think if they do that, if they try and balance out the single player crowd with the multiplayer crowd, they could really find some success with this game and with these new systems. A lot of the heavy lifting with getting them to work in the engine should be done, hopefully, by the time this releases. So hypothetically, future DLCs won't have that same barrier to entry and could be done more smoothly or even a bit more quickly. Not nearly a year like this one took. And something else that I just kind of found odd, where's all the content from PAX East? Like, I know there was quite a bit of press at this event, and there are some impressions of voice engineers posted online. It seems like overall, the reception was pretty positive, but again, 20 minutes. It's kind of hard to mess that up, even for Bethesda. But like this interview, was it really just like three questions? Was that the length of this interview? And was US Gamer the only person to do a Fault 76 interview? I feel like it's kind of weird that we're not seeing more in the way of interviews. I heard there were interview rooms. I didn't conduct one personally or even some of that gameplay coming out. I thought there'd be more in the post PAX new cycle of Fallout 76, but it seems like the vast majority of the content is reposts of this one interview that's not really, it's like three questions. Also something else, Bethesda actually conducted a hotfix for Fallout 76 today. It was no downtime. Basically it was just to fix certain exploits that I don't know much about. I don't know exactly what this fixed. But yeah, now there are a few less exploits out there to plague the game. As far as the exploiting in Fallout 76 goes right now, there are a few lingering things that are more minor, but the major ones are on PC using injection scripts, so third-party programs to conduct those exploits, not possible on consoles. But either way, that is going to wrap it up for this one, a bit of a post-PAX East wrap-up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative or entertaining, but with all that, I hope to see you all next time. Later!